Leslie Anna Ray is a Chicago area poet and activist who put into words an historic moment that left many speechless as America celebrated the first woman of color to be elected vice president. That's when her piece, Brown Girl, Brown Girl, originally written a few years ago, found new life. Leslie joins us now to talk about the poem inspired by uh, having time with her daughter that went on to inspire daughters of all ages everywhere. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us so much for having me. It's so lovely to see you. Oh, nice to see you too, albeit virtually. Last time we were together in the studio. We were. That seems like a million years it does, ago. doesn't it? But hopefully that will change very soon. We have a new administration, a new vice president. What was yeah. it about the election of our new vice president, or the selection, I should say, of the vice president that made you switch your, um, switch your poem a little bit? Well, I think all of us, the nation was just, you know, holding our breath, waiting to get um, to the point where we could call the election, where we got enough electoral um, votes. I was in the car with my um, daughter, Sage, and I write a lot about moments as they're happening. So my girlfriends from Xavier, they send me a text. They were like, hey, it happened. My daughter was like, pull over, you know, pull over. You want to write about it. And I did, but I, I couldn't think of anything new. I just kept thinking about Brown Girl and um, what this moment meant to brown girls everywhere who will be watching and seeing the ceiling shatter, what it meant to the brown girls inside of us, brown women who have fought very hard um, to achieve success in our own lives. Um, it just felt so different. It, it, it felt different than Barack Obama's win. Why? Um, there was something about seeing a woman mm -hmm. there in, in, in the second highest elected office in our nation, um, where we have been trying so long to get women there. I mean, you know, everyone from Shirley Chisholm to Hillary Clinton, we've been trying really hard for a long time in this nation. Don't forget for Ferrara, our, Geraldine Ferraro, too. Exactly. Um, you know, the list is, is long of women who courageously ran, knowing it will be hard, knowing they may not win, but continuing to pave this road. And so it was something that was just so visceral, that was exciting and hopeful, um, and the epitome of representation. Um, for me, as the daughter of a Mexican immigrant and a black man from New Orleans, um, to have my very American story echoed in um, Kamala Harris's election as vice president, being the daughter of an immigrant, the daughter of a Jamaican American man, it, it, it just, I felt it in my bones. And I think the nation did too. I think that's why it really resonated with so many of us. Do you see this making a difference as far as race relations are concerned? We know everything came to a pinnacle January 6th, but do you think that this new administration can bring this back, especially since uh, Kamala Harris is the vice president? I think that's the first step. I think, um, we have to have representation. There, it's something very important about having someone in the position to make decisions and influence and have power that has um, a similar background, that has walked in places that for so long the people who've making the decisions, who've been making the decisions, have no connection to. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think this is just the start of a brand new day. I mean, the, the inauguration, watching the first Latina Supreme Court justice swear in our first Asian and black female vice president. I mean, the boxes that we're checking and you know the, the barriers that are tumbling down with that moment is huge. What, it, what it, it tells us is there are possibilities that we didn't see before. We knew we could achieve them, but seeing it is, is inspirational. It, it pushes us forward to keep trying. Well, Leslie, we don't have a lot of time left, but we do want to hear some of your uh, brown girl, brown girl, so let us hear it. Absolutely. I will. It's one of my favorite things to do is to read <laughs> brown girl, brown girl. And brown girl, brown girl, what do you see? I see a vice president that looks like me. Brown girl, brown girl, what do you do? I thought, I hoped, I spoke what was true. Brown girl, brown girl, what do you know? That there are strong women who want me to grow. Brown girl, brown girl, what do you feel? That black girl magic will help us all heal. Brown girl, brown girl, what do you see? 
a world that sees my skin before it sees me. Brown girl, brown girl, what you gonna do? Gonna march, fight, and create until I make this world new. Brown girl, brown girl, how are you so strong? Because I got queens in my blood to help push me along. I love it, I love it. What were your thoughts on Amanda Gorman? With her, uh, her poem uh, on Inauguration Day, The Hill We Climb, 22 years old. 22 years old. I just think of all the brown and black girls who are picking up their pens and writing in their journals and seeing reflections of themselves. She was just a bright sun light that just lit the whole stage up. Um, it was just so, so, so beautiful um, and such a, a beautiful moment of inclusivity. Um, just, it just gave me chills. I, it was magnificent. All right, Leslie, and also congratulations to your first cousin, Russell Honoré, who we know kind of brought Hurricane Katrina around, and he's now going to be helping the administration with uh, COVID. Listen, the Honoré clan is so, so very proud of what he's been able to do, and we're just, we're here to see the healing that he brings. He has a special talent for it, and we're extremely proud that our country can benefit from it. All right, Leslie Honoré, thank you so much. Be safe, be well. Thank you. You do nice the same. Take to you. Care. Thank you. Now, if you'd like to check out more of her work, head to lesleyhonore.com. L e s l. There it is, right there. L e s l e h o n o r e. Or you can find her on social media.